Welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit and the Eucharistic celebration of the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. I have a few announcements. Wednesday devotions for the month of February are at Holy Trinity Church at 3 o'clock p.m. Please come together with your community to enjoy this half-hour devotion with song and prayer. The Sisters of the Holy Spirit are offering a one-time scholarship to a 2023 high school graduate who is an active member of Holy Spirit Church. Applications are available at the entrances to the church. And tickets for the fried pizza sale to be held on Friday, February 24th and Friday, March 3rd at Holy Spirit will be available after all Masses this weekend. Please silence all cell phones and other devices that may disturb our liturgy. And our celebrant today is Father Matt. And I ask you now to please rise and be members of God's holy family presence. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon. And thank you for joining us today for this liturgy as we celebrate today the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we gather in this church today, mindful of the many ways God loves, God shows his love for us, and mindful of our response to that love. 
Lord Jesus, you came to the nations to, <clears throat> you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our minds and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave a remnant in your midst, a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong, speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch the flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and he had sat down. And that is not right. A <laughs> <laughs> reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and the despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something. So that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Can you control everything? No, 
I can obsess over everything, but can I control everything? Two different things. They absolutely are. Let go and let God. So in other words, when we let go and let God, it doesn't mean that we don't actively participate with the graces that our Lord gives us. It doesn't mean that we are not called to go to the kingdom or on earth to the best of our abilities. Yes, we are asked to do that. But it, what it also means is we understand we live in a challenging world. We live in a world where, yes, thankfully there are so many good blessings to acknowledge. There are so many good things that happen. And yet, well, we also understand, too, we live in a difficult environment at times when people who are good, people who have done no wrong, unfortunately, have things happen to them that, at least at the surface level, appear that they shouldn't have happened to them. The good people suffer, and those whose behavior is not so commendable, they seem to sometimes escape any kind of, you know, any sort of, any sort of, um, what we might call, uh, consequences to their actions. And so, yes, we are called to let go, to let God. Now, granted, our second reading for today from Corinthians, Paul seems to use a bit of a backhand compliment when you stop and think about it, saying that God did not choose the wise of the world, but rather he chose the foolish. And you have to stop and think, if Paul is addressing me that way, I might look at that like saying, I think there's a compliment there somewhere, maybe somewhere, I have to look for it, I'm not quite sure where. There's a compliment there somewhere, but I have to go look for it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of um, in, the, in the first Lord of the Rings movie where Bilbo Baggins appearing before his fellow hobbits, he says, I know half of, I don't know as many of you as I should like, and I like half of you half as well as you should be liked. And you look at him thinking, okay, there's a compliment there somewhere, I guess. In any event, no matter how we slice or dice it, the idea is that we are called to let go and to let God. And to do that from a world's perspective may not seem to make a lot of sense. During Jesus' time, the, what we might call um, the lure or perhaps the temptation for wealth, for power, for status, those are all very real, and today those temptations are very real as well. The, the, the war, the temptation for power, for status, for having a sense of control. And we we'll see this in, in different ways. For, for those who are able to, in some ways, brag about how busy they are, brag about uh, how important they are, you know, brag about their wealth, you know, things of that nature, if you stop to think about it, ultimately we are called to let go and to let God and see how God uses the humble of the world. Think of how Jesus, he himself did this when he walked, with the, walked the earth 2,000 years ago with his disciples. He did not choose those who the world would have considered to be the most obvious of choices. But instead, to church fishermen, he chose public sinners to be the ones who would follow after him. And so, therefore, when we, if we do sometimes get wrapped up in wanting to have what we might consider to be um, more control over a situation than what is realistic, we can pause, we can think for a moment, and we can say, okay, maybe this is a time for me to let go and to let God. Maybe it is. While I want to be able to have as much control over my environment as I want to have, while I want to be able to have the day run as fully as possible, and really while I want to get my way, ultimately it comes down to letting go, letting God, asking God, of course, what I would like, but also being open enough to see what God has in mind. And when we do that, we are able to live out the Beatitudes in the ways that are good and healthy. To let go, to let God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consistential of the Father. Through him all things made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism with the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so at this time, we present our petitions before the Lord. Our these prayers for Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. During the presentation of gifts, please join in 543, 543, the cry of the Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Thor, the founts of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you adore the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co aware of your eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sather's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give him the power and glory of our Lord, now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of shooting under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And again, thank you for joining us today for our liturgy. We wish all of you a very blessed rest of the day today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Say, Lord God, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be your defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, keep him from the crime, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all of the spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. So the father brought his son with him to his office, and they arrived, and, he was able, and the son was able to go around and uh, meet all daddy's co-workers and see where daddy worked. But towards the end of the day, the little boy started crying, and the dad said, son, what's wrong? What's wrong? Looking up at his dad, his son said, dad, dad, I don't understand. Where are all those clowns you said you worked with? <laughs>